My name is Mary Beth Tomka. I'm the head of collections at the Texas Archaeological Research Lab, and I am standing outside of one of our storage rooms that has some of the oldest and nicest stuff that we have and that we, we take care of. And we want to show you what becoming an archaeologist can be all about. Um, it's fun. It's a combination of science, math, history, you name it. You can use your talents. So come on in. We are inside of our general collections room. As you can see, it is uh, a strange little room. It's actually a building inside of a building. We have compact shelving in here, and um, we are going to show you some of the funnest, that's a real educated word, the funnest collections that we have here. So come this way. And you'll see one of my associates, this is Andy Reardon Cummings. She and I work together a lot. So this cabinet is one of my favorites to show off things. This is a drawer that shows material from a site in El Paso County. It is a cave. If any of you know the Bullock Museum, this little artifact is, is the picture of something that is on exhibit at the Bullock right now with Charles' name on it. This site was probably used 10,000 years or more and it's called Ceremonial Cave. And they would come and they potentially would do ceremonies and then leave items behind. So what we have here is we have some bone awls that might have been used for making sandal parts, which are here, or just making mats, which I'm going to hopefully show you when we go to another site. So here's some sandals. Now I would say that we probably have maybe in the tens of thousands of sandals because we have a large collection of West Texas material, which is very dry in West Texas, has caves. They kept, um, they kept things very, very well preserved. There you can see it. I think this is probably where it would go through your ties. Think of, um, a chancla <laughs> or a sandal um, that you put your foot through. Here's a little baby one. And so you can see that big toe probably went in there. So we have, we have, as I said, tens of thousands. This is another drawer that shows you the kinds of stuff that you can find. Now this is from a different collection but it shows you the kinds of stuff that you can find at dry caves. These little bundles here probably have tobacco in them. And there is a researcher who wants to do a study to see what the species of tobacco is. He's still trying to get money to do it. So we're still waiting. Those awls that I was showing, they probably could have been used um, also for sewing purposes. And that's all vegetal material. Anybody have any uh, agave in their yards? That's what they were using. Okay. This, this is also one of my favorite drawers. Again, probably tobacco in here. So what we've got in here is actually called a rabbit stick. However, I call it a bunny bundle. And that's what this is. Now that hole is for use as a fire starter after they didn't put all these long sticks here are probably bunny boppers. This material is what they would have used for hunting for, oh, tens of thousands of years. They're hafted onto a stick, which then fit into a longer shaft something like this. And so when the point broke, all I had to do was change the four shaft. They didn't have to chip a new tool. So that's there. These guys 
we think might have been used the same way, but they're blunts. And maybe that was used for shooting at rabbits because you wanted to use their pelts. So you don't want to damage the pelts. You don't want to put a hole in it and get blood all over the place. That's one of my favorites. Here's some other stuff that's really interesting. That is actually wood. Sticks that have been woven for rooms, potentially. But this is really fun. Look at this. This is all woven. And the next cabinet I'm going to show you, you're just going to get be amazed. And I have a story to go with it, too. That's one of the things that anthropologists and archaeologists do is we see the artifacts, we know human behavior, and so we kind of put a story to it. Um, and, you know, the best thing is nobody can prove us wrong because the people don't exist anymore. Okay. I'm going to show you this other cat. Okay. In a dry cave in West Texas in the 1930s, this little guy was found. It's woven like I was showing you before, but in this bag were a whole bunch of other artifacts. And the story that I have created based on the artifacts is it, that were in it um, is that somebody probably went out to do a hunting quest because the materials that they had were stone tools, but they also had materials that may have made them hallucinate so that they could have a dream state to find where the animals were. And that material is all down here. So first off, this is a picture of that pouch with all the material that was found in it. So we have seeds and berries, we have stone tools, we have flint napping tools up here. We have another little basket that had material in it. We have twine, just everything you would need to go on a vision quest and then hunt. And you had the raw material in case you needed to um, Retool, remap things. Uh, this individual is probably male because females wouldn't have gone out by themselves. But we have things like this turtle carapace, which may have been his uh, totem. Who knows? Could be. We also have ochre that he could have painted his face with. And we have a shell. Where's the shell? There's the shell. The shell that he might have mixed the paint in, which would have made sense to do that. Then inside it, the pouch, are all of these jackrabbit mandibles, the, you know, the lower jaw. They're all from the same side of the animal. So he could have been doing some bloodletting, which would have helped in his vision quest. Underneath this pouch was a series of matting. Here's one matting. Here's another set of matting that came from it. And it was all sitting on top of a rabbit skin row, all piled up neatly. Well, these are some of the pieces of what's left that fell off the row. And you can see that it's, it's definitely rabbit fur. Now I can't show you the row because it is in a drawer by itself and it has not been opened in years and we're not going to uh, take it out because it's so fragile. But even here you can see these are some of the bigger pieces that kind of fell off of it. So they would have sewn it all together and then it's been in here. We don't know what happened to this person. All we know is that they piled all their stuff up and they disappeared. Let's see. Oh, so I was telling you about the hallucinogens. And I can never remember which one is the hallucinogen and which one will make you vomit. But, you know, you're hallucinating. 
you're taking something that's going to make you vomit, you're bloodletting, as I showed you over there. Um, so a dream quest seems to be the, the best explanation. Well, these are some of the really fun stuff that we have, but we have millions of objects that we have the pleasure and the, can't think of the word, the pleasure and the honor of taking care of and caring for so that when our grandchildren's grandchildren want to come to Tarl, and hopefully it will still be here, this material will be here. Thank you. Let us know if you want to reach out and talk with us.